call the meeting to order. It's 601. <coughs> I guess I should start by saying Happy New Year to everyone. Happy New Year. It's good to see you all in the new year. Um, we have the minutes of December 10th, 2019. To consider. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Four zero. Financial statement, signed warrants. Yes, there are 11 warrants presented for signature, totaling $123,728.75. And the general fund and school through December 31st were emailed previously. If you have questions, I'm happy to take them. Um, nothing new to report since the last meeting. No major concerns or issues. <coughs> and we continue with the FY21 budget planning process as per the timeline. Did anyone have any questions? Um, I, I had a couple of just fairly quick soon I hope I can read that. <coughs> I was just uh, always at this time of year always wonder on building heat and um, fuel oil mm -hmm. where we sit. I mean I see that it's been encumbered and there's still um, money left over after encumbrances but are we falling pretty close to projections on as far as I know, I don't have any red flags at this point. Um, I can check in with Bill on that a little bit more just to see about the ordering and consumption. Um, but as far as I know, we're in good shape. Okay. And I, it's probably more for Tina than anything, but I noticed that we're spending or we're fairly deep into the substitute budget at this time. I think that might be offset in salaries because we do have a lot of long-term subs. Right. But that also, I'm happy to say that means we're also getting subs because that's <laughs> always an issue too. So. Okay. And I think those are the only two that I really noticed. It, not so much jumped out at me, but might be areas of concern later on. In the year, so. <laughs> yeah, do you have some LOAs right now? Any leaves of absences? We do have a couple yeah. on to ourselves. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. A little offset in the salaries. Mm -hmm. Nothing else? Okay, we're we have some warrants to sign, so feel free to take okay. away at them as we move through. Uh, we're at public comment, and uh, we do have a bit of public here this evening, probably more than we're used to on a regular basis, and we. In, this, uh, in our meetings. Uh, so I will, I will open the floor to public comment, but I'd like to sort of get a show of hands as, as to how many people in this audience are looking to make a comment this evening. So we have about, um, well, we have about eight or nine people, it looks like. So what I'm gonna do is I'll, I'll start, since I saw these folks up front first, I'm going to ask people to try and hold their comments to not much more than two minutes, one or two minutes, please. Um, I'm not, we're not prepared to be here for, you know, an hour listening to co public comments. Um, so, we want to start. First of all, I feel a lot closer than what I normally know. My name is Denise Danek. And my teaching career started in this district as a student teacher at Old Deerfield Grammar School in 1992. That was the year this building was built. Since then, my roles in the school community have involved being a first grade IA, a sixth grade teacher, a professor at UMass, placing supervising interns here as a parent of two children, one of whom is here, an adult child here, and as a mentor teacher of eight colleagues. I'm currently in my 13th year as a fifth grade teacher here. I realize our contract is complicated, so I'm gonna highlight one aspect of it. A teacher at Frontier 
with the same amount of years in this district as me, I don't think there's too many of us, with the same amount of education, teaching the same community of students, has a different contract. He makes $3,964 more a year than me. He pays $2,730 a year less than what I do for a family medical plan. So each year, he has a net gain of $6,694 over me. For almost three decades, <clears throat> I've stood up for our students here in front of you many times and for our community. And I expect that our school committee and that our administrators will stand up and advocate for me, please. So please make progress toward that gap. We're not expecting it to be closed in one year or even three years, but please consider closing that gap. Thanks. Hi, my name is Sarah, and I'm actually going to be speaking on behalf of Catherine Tuck. Um, she's a third grade teacher here at Deerfield. Um, so this is written from her. Um, this is her ninth year here, um, but she's been teaching for 11 years. Catherine went to Westfield State College where she majored in elementary education. She then obtained a master's degree at American International College as a reading specialist. Then she continued to advance her graduate study at Elms College in Autism Spectrum Disorders. As educators, we are ex- Would you hold for one second while our friend goes by outside? <laughs> and now a lot of it's bad. You can please. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Just got on a roll. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. Right. Sorry. As educators, we are expected to obtain a master's degree in our field. With this comes the added expense of college tuition and fees. <coughs> And unfortunately, with the current salary scale we have in our contract, so many of us struggle to pay the debt accrued from our degrees, on top of sustaining the cost of normal living expenses. In order to offset this cost, many of the fellow teachers in this district work a second job. In Catherine's experience, she works at a local restaurant four nights a week, adding 25 extra hours on top of her extended school days. That's the reason that I'm here reading for her because she's at work right now. She can't be here. What other career requires a person to have a master's degree and still have the need of working an additional job? By settling on a contract that allows for fair pay between elementary and secondary educators within our district, all teachers could be in a better position to support themselves without the need of a supplemental income. Thanks for your consideration. My name is Lori Roach. I've been teaching since 1998, and I've been teaching at Deerfield Elementary School since 2005. Over my years at Deerfield, I have been a fifth grade teacher and a special education teacher. In addition to teaching, I've served on numerous committees. I participate in ongoing professional development and graduate work, and I help start the Deerfield Mile. I have been on step 14 for the past seven years, and I will remain on this step until 2025. My colleagues working at Frontier make about $3,000 more than me each year. I will be on this step for a total of 12 years, which is about a $36,000 difference from my colleagues at Frontier. Not only is my annual salary less, but our retirement is based on three years of our highest salary. Therefore, my colleagues at Frontier will also benefit in the retirement from this pay disparity. During contract negotiations, it is standard practice to compare contracts with like districts. In this case, we are comparing Deerfield Elementary School to another district here in Deerfield, our middle and our high school. These two districts are so alike, we share the same academic calendar, comparable hours, the same superintendent, we share a district special education director. We share the same central office staff. We have school committee that are representatives for the elementary and frontier. We attend the same opening day meeting. And most importantly, we serve the same student population from the exact same communities. 
As a teacher at Deerfield Elementary School, as a parent of two children attending Frontier Regional High School, and as a resident of South Deerfield, I asked the school committee to support and advocate our request to close the gap between the elementary school teachers and our colleagues at Frontier. Our hashtag is close the gap because the current proposal doesn't lay out equal pay, but it takes a step in the direction to close the pay disparity between the elementary school teachers and the Frontier teachers. Over here we had some hands go up somewhere. Hi, my name is Susan Barasti. I'm the occupational therapist here, and I've been here for 28 years. So I've been here for a long time and a lot of contracts. And um, I went to school at Utica College, part of Syracuse University, and then I got my master's in business. And now in order to be a practicing therapist, you have to have your master's in order to get, get a license here in the state. Uh, physical therapy has to have a doctorate, and we're moving toward that in occupational <coughs> therapy. Um, we are elementary level educators, and as an OT here, I work to ensure that students develop those foundational skills that are necessary so that they can continue their journey through the upper grade levels and beyond. Union 38 teachers are advocating for a collective bargaining agreement that reflects the value that educators bring to this community. The town have asked Union 38 teachers to limit retirement benefits for future Union 38 employees. While we are willing to agree to this particular changes, we're asking that the town offer a wage increase that offsets the change to this <coughs> valuable benefit that we have now in our contract. Thank you. Hi, my name is Colleen Smith. I'm the adjustment counselor at Deerfield Elementary. When people go to work and they put their blood, sweat, and tears into a place that doesn't show back how proud they are to have people like us, we start to feel like we aren't valued. It's especially true in this building where we can directly look across the street at our colleagues that are being fairly compensated for their time. And for what reason? Because it's historically been this way? I would like to challenge the committee to no longer use this systemic excuse for why we can't close the pay gap within our own district moving forward. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Hi, I'm Giselle Richardson. I'm the school psychologist at Deerfield Elementary School. <coughs> and uh, Union 38 schools have a history of attracting both new and experienced educators who choose to spend their careers in the district and in many cases make their homes in the towns that we serve. If the towns begin to eliminate end of career benefits without offering educators reasonable wage increases, we believe the district will be unable to maintain the quality of schools the towns now enjoy. I am a Waitley resident. Um, my spouse and I live in Waitley. We've lived in Waitley for 18 years. Um, I've been here at Deerfield Elementary School for six almost, from the beginning of my sixth year. I am quite frankly hoping to retire in this district and we'll see whether that will be possible uh, because I'm also stuck on step 14. So. Um, I just hope that the school committee can think about the bigger picture and longer term impact of problems with contract negotiations. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I, I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you all tonight. Um, my name is Julie Fallon, and I currently teach second grade. I've taught kindergarten, first, second, and third grade during my 20-year career at Deerfield Elementary School. I received my initial teaching license in 1988 from UMass, where I studied early childhood education and psychology. 
Recently, I completed a graduate level sheltered English immersion class that met on most Saturdays this fall at the Reading Institute at Mass MoCA and have earned my endorsement. I spent most of our holiday recess working on my application to graduate school at UMass, where my objective is to earn a master's degree in social justice and education. For the last four years, I've served as a supervising practitioner to prospective teachers from UMass, welcoming student teachers into my class full time each spring. I consider it a privilege and an honor to give back in this way to a profession that I love. Deerfield Elementary School is a very special place where students learn, grow, and thrive. Because we teach the youngest students in the district, our role as teachers is a fluid one. And writing a job description that encompasses all we do for children would be almost impossible. We are at once teachers, counselors, coaches, nurses, cheerleaders, and serve as daytime parents to our students teaching them not just academics, but tools for navigating life in an ever-changing world. How to tie a shoe, how to sneeze into your elbow, how to own mistakes, and how to treat everyone with dignity and respect. Last year, I was overjoyed to be invited to one of my former third graders' high school graduation, and I've also attended student birthday parties outside of school on the weekends because I know how important it is to that student. And because I care deeply about and work hard to build strong connections with every student I teach, I don't consider these acts to be extra. I consider them best practice. You see, teaching our youngest children is never just a job. It's part of who we are. It's part of our identity. And I know this is true for many of my colleagues in this room tonight. This fall, I became aware of the significant pay gap that exists between secondary and elementary teachers right here in our district. The data shows that when our students graduate and move on to middle and high school, where a majority of teachers are men, the opposite of what you see at the elementary level, they're paid more for teaching the same students and have more generous benefits. Why is this? Because that's the way it is and always has been? And if this is the case, why? The world has changed vastly over the last two decades, and teaching has changed vastly. We as teachers have worked diligently to embrace new curriculum and technologies to prepare our students to live in a global society. As elementary teachers, we have done the work to ensure success in the 21st century learning standards for our students. Where is the pay? that should accompany all of these changes. Do we really want to be a district that maintains antiquated values of compensating male teachers in high school more monetarily than their predominantly female counterparts in elementary school? It's time our pay scale is brought up to the 21st century standards. So tonight, I urge you, please support our teachers. Show that you value our work show that you value equity. Please close this gap. Thank you for listening, and thank you for all of your service that you provide to our district. Deerfield for eight years. Um, I began in the upper grades as a fifth and sixth grade teacher and two years ago I switched to first grade. Um, one of the reasons I moved was because I wanted to broaden my experience as a classroom teacher. Um, I also wanted to move to help fill in school need. I have learned and grown based on these varied experiences. I have enjoyed different aspects of each grade level from their different developmental needs to the sameness of creating a warm and safe community for all learners. The very different grade levels, almost middle school to early childhood, have given me a unique perspective and I have faced challenges that come with moving from sixth to first grade. From the importance of preparing sixth graders 
our sixth grade students um, for the challenges of middle school, such as advancing their math skill set to include algebra and very different, yet equally crucial task of teaching first graders how to read. Moving down in grade levels has not made this job any easier or less challenging. I work just as hard as a first grade teacher as I did as a sixth grade teacher. And I know that my sixth grade teacher colleagues would say the same about the fact that they don't work any less than our middle and high school educators. This is our confusion. Why are our towns financially valuing our seven to 12 educators more than us, their pre-K to sixth grade educators? Teaching has vastly changed over the, last, the past eight years and I, that I've been here. Technology in the classroom is not just a frill, but necessary in order to prepare students for the world we now live in. Assessment, data collection, um, and data analysis drive curriculum. <clears throat> Many more students are now entering our schools with trauma backgrounds, which requires a completely different skill set. We are often their safe, consistent space. Teaching students is not just about teaching academics, it's about teaching the whole child emotionally and socially. In order to teach at the level that I want to teach and the level that my students deserve, I need to spend extra time preparing lessons, grading, looking at data, etc., well beyond the hours of our contract. This is not what was previously expected, which used to be just bringing home a stack of papers to grade. These extra hours often occur during the time when I should be with my family. In addition, because my salary and benefits are less than those of my frontier colleagues and surrounding districts, I've had to take on a second job and I know that I'm not the only one. We heard that tonight. We know we can't have our contract mirror frontiers, our own district high school, with their benefits and salary in this single contract. We are simply requesting to close the gap and move towards parity. Thank you. Hi. My name is uh, Richard Allium. I use he and him. Uh, can I get a raise of hands of parents in the, in the audience here? These are the parents that support the teachers here, and that's a lot. And I know there's a lot more, and I'm going to make it my goal to bring twice this amount of parents to the next meeting. Um, I just want to. That I support these teachers. I support them when they are asking for a fair contract, and I support them when they are asking for pay equity. And I believe that we need to invest in our students, in our young learners, to become the problem solvers that we're going to need. Because there's a lot of problems that we need to solve, <laughs> and it all starts right here at the elementary level, preschool, kindergarten. I've been a parent in this um, school for four years now, and I'm overwhelmed with gratitude for the teachers that I've had, and looking forward to the teachers that we will have. I'm Janine Downey. I'm actually a former parent of a Deerfield Elementary student, three, three boys. Um, I'm here in support of the teachers. Honestly, I could not do what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. I recently uh, wrote an email to Trevor McDaniel that I just wanted to share with everyone to sort of put the issues out on the table that as a parent and a resident of the town, I would like to know more about. So I wanted to share that and reading that tonight. Um, this was sent earlier, uh, probably last week. Um, so my name is Janine Downey. I'm a current resident of South Deerfield. I am reaching out to you to specific, reaching out to you specifically as you currently wear two hats in our town as a member of both the Select Board and the DES School Committee. As a town resident and parent of three boys who received a solid foundation, a solid educational foundation from DES, I would like to better understand the controversy surrounding the lack of contract for the DES teachers. Hoping you can answer the following questions prior to the school committee meeting scheduled for tonight, and I believe he's out of town tonight. It's my understanding that the DES teachers have historically been paid lower salaries as well as receive a less comprehensive benefit package than their fellow teachers at Frontier Regional High School. Could you please confirm this? And if yes, could you provide the rationale for the disparity? 
Two, what are the specific roadblocks that are negating the finalization of the ES teacher's contract and the request for a fair compensation? Three, how have other Union 38 teacher or administration pay raises been approved? Has the approval and disseminating of these funds had any impact on the lack of the town or the school committee decision for DES teachers to receive fair wages compared to their peers in the district? A teacher's role has dramatically changed over the years. Their responsibilities and daily expectations are well beyond simply teaching in a classroom. I don't think anyone would dispute this, so it's incredibly disturbing to me, and it should be to all, that these teachers feel undervalued and not fairly compensated. Even without a contract, these teachers continue to show up every day, educate, counsel, and put our kids first. The least our town can do is recognize that our DES teachers work and settle this dispute in the most equitable way possible. I appreciate your time in answering my questions above, hopefully providing some clarity, and look forward to a response. questions or you ask some important questions uh, I think I can comment to an to a degree on my personal feelings about equity and issues that are being raised here but we are in negotiations we can't really discuss any specifics related to those contract negotiations I don't think um, asking for specifics as part of right. the contract negotiations. I just if, if, if I can just have for a, have a moment here, um, we're in a situation where there is has a an inequity has developed. I can certainly Darius can speak after I speak um, over the years, and um, I don't think it's an intentional process. We have two teacher associations, two uh, unions in the town of Deerfield, or in town of Deerfield, Waitley, Conway, Sunderland and then the Frontier Regional. Um, they're negotiated <coughs> separately, they're two separate contracts, and over the years, those two contracts have developed an inequity. Um, in, in terms of the benefits, um, the towns are responsible for the Union 38 benefits. And Frontier teachers are under the Frontier Regional School central office, uh, it's a, administered through the central office. They negotiate their own insurance coverages, they negotiate their own benefits, the towns negotiate theirs. Each of the four towns provides different benefits for each of the four town teacher units. Yeah. As you may or may not be aware. We know, we know. Okay, so uh, there's, those are some of the reasons behind the inequities. Two separate bargaining units come to two separate agreements, each have come to two separate agreements over the years. Um, you know, as historically, the, uh, the disparity between the two, when I started here 30 years ago, and <laughs> serving on the school committee, um, there was a discrepancy, but a disparity, but it wasn't as, as drastic as what you see, you know, you're seeing now. Um, and the uh, you know the developments have occurred over the past uh, how many years? <coughs> the the widening of the gap. Yeah. So I mean, so the the I did some research on it, and so in 1954, when they created the regional agreement in order to get the teachers that were currently employed in the schools to agree to regionalize and join and leave their towns to come there, they offered them more money. So right there is where the, the creation of secondary making more money than elementary, it's right in the regional agreement. You can read it, it's like bullet point number five. We will, we, because we regionalize, we will offer higher salaries to teachers. So that's where it was created. And whether or not there was a gender, I've heard gender being talked about mm -hmm. over time, whether or not there were more male teachers in 1954 in the secondary, and I probably guess there was, <laughs> uh, looking back in time. Whether that was a factor in that, that's what occurred. Um, I went back to look at past contracts, because I was like, where did this, how did this get large? In 1996, 
I looked at step 13, or where that step was at masters, because most people who are at step 13 have a masters. And that's kind of where, um, there's addition of steps and as you go through different contracts, so it's hard to compare contract to contract, but I picked that step to go through. In 1996, it was 2%, okay? In, in around the 2000, I'm gonna be sure I get my years right, around 2010, the Frontier contract, the Frontier Committee tried to lower health insurance, and by doing so, added more money to the top step over three years. That same year, the elementaries got lower percentages, and it went from around, it was at that point, a little over 2.7%, it went to 7%, okay? And so that's the year it happened. And in the same time, the committee did that to save money on health insurance because they had to incur the health insurance costs as a school district. So that's where the thing broke. We are now at the step 13, around five, five, six, I think, five, four, if I'm going off memory again, uh, the difference between that step 13 step. So kind of tracking that through time. So this has all happened in the last 20 years, the change of the two. I, Ken is correct, and I, I wasn't part of any of, even though I've been here for um, you know, 12, 13 years, I haven't been a part of the negotiations. The negotiations, con in each one of them, the concentration was on something else. Whatever was important to the MTA at the time, or the, the, the local teacher association, or the MTA, um, for each group. And so they were concentrating on different things. So there is a split. And so um, how do you make up that split? It's going to take time to make up that split. You know, and we talked about the different contract, uh, the current contract <coughs> offer proposals there on the table. Um, I think the committee is trying to recognize that, but at the same time, if you sit around, sit, if you sit through to listen to the budget hearings, <clears throat> there's only so much money. And how much can we move per year? And where can we find money that then escalates year and year, year, year to year out? So that's the, that's kind of the history of mm -hmm. how there's the, the two have occurred. We are, you know, we have that situation now. Thank you, dear. Um, and, and I just want to emphasize, <clears throat> I can speak for myself at this point in time, but I think I speak for the other my colleagues here at the table. Um, I admire teachers. I sit in wonder of how people can walk in on a daily basis to a job where I have trouble, or had trouble, I'm retired now, but um, when I worked, I had a job that I could focus on, but I didn't have 20 to 25 young children probing me with questions or disrupting my work process. I had other employees that <laughs> disrupted work, but I personally could not have done what you folks do, or could not do what you folks do. Um, I, I have undying admiration for educators, what they provide for society, what they provide <coughs> for families, and um, I've always fought over the 30 years I've served on this committee for the schools as hard as I can to provide you with the resources you need and the support that you need uh, to do your jobs and do them as well as you have. The <coughs> reputation of this union, the reputation of this elementary school, the reputation of all four <coughs> towns elementary schools in the Commonwealth is well known. Um, we're proud of what we have and the town of Deerfield is proud of, of what we have. Um, and to have you folks sitting here thinking that you're not respected, not appreciated, or, you know, provide me with that feeling this evening, that you get the feeling that you're not getting the support and the um, appreciation from the town, you know, is disturbing to me. Because I think this town, over the years, has done a remarkable job of supporting the schools. In an era of Proposition 2.5, where 2.5% increases are all that's allowed mm -hmm. in a town's levy limit and budget increases, this town has consistently met every budget requirement that's been proposed uh, in the last I don't know, 15 to 20 years. There's been very little conversation back and forth. We've gone in with a budget generally, had to do a few tweaks here and there, but when we've asked for more staff, when we've asked for more resources, when we've asked for new building, uh, to maintain the building, the town has consistently supported it. 
And I know that as I sit on the committee, I will consistently, I will continue to work to support all your efforts. And I will certainly work with the administration and, and other committee members to try and close this gap. That's, that's all I can say at this point in time. We have budget limitations. We can't close the gap all at once. And um, we'll see what happens as we conclude negotiations. So, I don't know if anyone else wants to say anything. Or? Um, I, I guess I just want to add a couple things, sure. e echoing what, what Ken has said. Um, that, um, that I think we just have to be, understand that language kind of matters in terms of how we all talk about this. Um, and information flow is important. Um, and my understanding is that, um, and, and again, also, just this is a wonderful crowd. Nobody here is on the negotiating committee, just so you know. So um, <laughs> uh, don't get too upset with us. Um, but um, from what I understand, even the, uh, first of all, from what I understand, you is incredibly close right now in terms of what the negotiations have been like. Um, and that even the um, administration's position uh, on whatever it is, does work towards closing the gap. Um, and somebody, I can't remember who said it, um, but somebody very appropriately talked about how this has sort of become an issue this year, like we've become more aware of it this year. So, and I think it's important to recognize that and not sort of this, this other comments are made as though it's some sort of, you know, grander scheme to, not to be rude, but to screw the teachers. And, and I just, Worry that um, recognize that people are very supportive of the teachers here, um, and that this gap thing is something that's come upon everybody. I think as an issue that should be worked on, um, and I think it's important to recognize that, from what I, just, what I understand anyway, there's been a commitment to move towards that gap. Other people have rightly said it's going to take a while uh, to do that. My understanding is that since the December committee meeting that we had here. So there hasn't been any meeting with the union negotiating committee and the administration negotiating committee. I think it's scheduled for January 22nd. So my worry about you know, misunderstandings festering um, would obviously be uh, an unfortunate thing um, to have happen. Um, so that, I don't know, I don't want to ramble, but, um, <laughs> but I think this is important to keep in mind. And, and the proposal on the table gives consistent raises People need to know that, you know, every year for, for three years. Um, I also think people, just in terms of information, um, my understanding, and if I'm wrong, please correct me, but when we talk about the pay gap, again, it's two, two separate systems. It developed, it's nobody's fault. It's developed and we should focus on it. But even now, there's a pay gap apparently going the other direction, meaning that we actually here in our little school, uh, and I suppose all the other elementary schools, we pay our starting folks, right? The first few steps are paid more than Frontier. Um, now, obviously, I'm not involved with Frontier negotiations, and I don't know whether they're going to throw back and say, well, we need to close that gap. I hope not, because we need to work together. Um, but I just, it, it just sounds to me, from what I've been hearing, that it's, um, it's a nuanced issue. Everyone's committed to working on it. Um, and nobody is, nobody is purposely trying to create a gap, which it just sounds like. Um, it was a bit of, I don't know, people getting upset as though somebody's doing that on purpose. Nobody is. I think we're committed to paying teachers as much as we can, and, and if we can close that gap, uh, we will. So, um, well, that's all I have to say. <coughs> we all set? All set. Okay. Well, thank, thank you all for your concerns. Thank you all for coming out to voice your support of the teachers. Um, thank you all for your support of the Deerfield Elementary Schools. And uh, we're going to move on to the rest of our agenda. Again. So thank you. You're more than welcome to stay, by the way. You can, uh, we'll be getting to the budget in, in a short time, so you can hear a little bit more about the impacts of mo money on schools. So. Moving to unfinished business capital requests. Did we have anything? <coughs> that was more the follow up to we're keeping that on the list until right. as we go through the process because we're looking at the different funding sources from mm -hmm. 
Right. And we keep on Trevor, make sure he's doing the CPA thing. Keep on you because you're on the capital committee, just making right. sure it's moving forward. But you guys have that initial yeah. meeting, right? Yes, uh, we, the capital planning committee met last night. Uh, the school requests um, that are in at this point in time are the generator, the, uh, I've got to try and remember them again. Uh, yeah, but primarily the generator was the, the only over, out, the only question really remaining out. We have the restroom renovation, the second year, the three year renovation project on the restrooms, the second year of flooring renovations, and uh, then the generator request. And the generator request is still being discussed and I think is, uh, may move forward this year actually. Um, <coughs> so, uh, we will continue to keep you updated. Um, and they're keeping an eye on the, the last one was whether or not we get a grant to do the outside entrance and courtyards. The, um, the they, courtyard yeah. entrance was also had a placeholder in yeah. FY20, so or 20 or 21, so it, it was on our, <coughs> our sheet anyways. Just want to make sure it's not on there. No, it's not. It hasn't. We haven't lost sight of it. Okay. So. Okay, uh, so that takes care of unfinished business. Under new business, we have a Yankee Candle donation that we'd like to talk about. Yeah, so, I mean, officially, um, we talked about it last time, right? I don't think I did. I don't no. think I mentioned they, they, it. I okay, so. Tabling it for now. Do you want bigger or make the phone? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So, uh, Yankee Candle donated $4,000 to uh, Deerfield Elementary School, and we're hoping to use it to um, apply and extend some of our green environmental uh, initiatives that we have at the school by um, putting in two water filling stations. So, the water power filling stations. Okay. And so, um, Yankee Candle in the past has given scholarships to graduating seniors and have been about $20,000 over the recent years. And this is the first year where they've now expanded and they gave $4,000 to Deerfield Elementary, $4,000 to Wheatley Elementary, and $4,000 to Frontier. So I just wanted to thank them publicly at each meeting. I have sent, I already sent a letter, thank you. Prior, you as, as part of our um, policy, have to vote gifts of this kind of size. So we don't actually have the, what the number is, but I'm gonna imagine number of $4,000 the school committee um, needs to accept a gift, um, especially from private businesses and such. Um, so <coughs> they have policies with have stop gaps because there are sometimes agencies out there that may donate that may not be in the best interest of public school. Do you want me to get the check out of the office? What's that? Do you want me to get the check out of the office? Kind of, <laughs> um, so I do, I do need a vote for well, to accept I, the donation. I would, uh, I would accept a, a motion to accept a donation of $4,000 from the Yankee Candle Company with deep appreciation. So Thank you, Mary. Do we have a second? Uh, second that. Assuming there's no strings attached with the letter. Can no, you spend on okay. Basically, allow the principal to decide. Yeah, actually, the only requirement was that they could please tell what they're going to spend it on at this board. They, did, they do an annual gift giving ceremony. They also give to the police department the um, fire departments of town of Waitley and Deerfield as well each year. So, and also EMS on certain years. They have a rotation. <clears throat> okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Approved. Four. Uh, next we have, why don't we go to the memorandum agreement of agreement? Okay, sure. Here's a copy. Um, basically, this is a memorandum to the IA contract um, that needs your approval. <clears throat> basically, what happens, the language, one of the things we changed in the IA contract was to pay for sub coverage um, after the first hour, $5. Um, there was some in, remember we have four buildings underneath this, you know, four different buildings in this contract, so different things happen in different buildings. But in some buildings, um, there may have been an IA who had covered a class for 45 minutes beginning of the day, 45 minutes at the end of the day. Well, the contract language on this states that that doesn't count. It didn't go over an hour and in continuous hour. Yet, in essence, they, you know, they worked an hour and a half um, doing that. And um, while some principals may have said, yeah, I'll pay for that, we you know, met with the union um, 
to talk about making that consistent and just doing a memorandum of understanding. Additionally, the specials, what are you doing? The specials, um, specials are under 45 minutes. So if an IA was to cover a phys ed, and many times it would happen, I would have been in that class, may have been in that class either way, that's now the teacher's gone, the IA takes over for that class, is in there for the full duration of a class, acting as a teacher, it's under an hour, they weren't given that additional compensation, okay? And so um, that came up in our conversations with the, the union about that, and I felt that um, that was you know, um, worth um, changing as well. So, so basically those are the two things, these are non, um, these are sunsetted at the, Next negotiation, if you read through the language, is basically, it's kind of a trial for both sides to see through this thing, yeah. um, and we'll have to be negotiated into the next contract. So, like most MOUs, that's kind of how you kind of operate on that. So, um, I'm looking for a vote to approve that, and then I'll, Ken, you're gonna have to sign off. That's mm -hmm. what happens. I'll give you All folks right. a minute more to read it. drafting this budget for you all so please let me know if there's anything that you want to see done different for the next meeting I'm happy to take feedback make changes um, we wanted to present as much raw material as we could so this change summary looks a little bit different than what you've seen in prior years um, and I'm going to start with the caveat that I just found a formula error um, Tina and Darius and I spoke this afternoon um, about removing one of the requests on the wish list that was originally put in and I can see that my formula carried over wrong. So um, what we're going to be looking at for the percentage here on the second page, which I know is always of great interest, um, currently at a 3.6% increase. That's going to go up um, slightly once I go in and figure out what that formula problem is. Um, and I do apologize in advance for that. It was a last minute change that I did not double check, so completely my fault. Um, so a couple of general statements. We looked at expenditures based on the last three fiscal years and made some adjustments up or down depending on where line items fell, whether they had been overspent or underspent in prior years, and then did meet with department heads and the principal to consider all of the wants and needs for the next fiscal year. Uh, another comment is that the Deerfield percentage of shared central office expenditures is going to go up slightly, so that's going to cause some automatic inflation in the central office expenses on top of any type of um, salary increase for non-union personnel or <coughs> inflation for you know, utility bills or things like that. Um, so that is unfortunately a little bit of a gap that, or an increase that we have to absorb. Remind us why that is? So um, it's based on enrollment each year enrollment, as of October 1st. Not population. Um, so a few things that are built in here that I just want to explain up front is that the IA wages, uh, the contract that we've agreed upon for them, they're 
uh, raise adjustment and then any steps or column changes are included in here. Uh, there is a percentage built in for potential teacher contract settlement, including step movement and column change. So not just that percentage, but also taking into consideration any steps <coughs> for next year. And then a wage increase for non-union personnel as well. So I'm not going to go through line by line, but I do want to highlight a few things for you, um, things that are of significant change. So the first one uh, that I want to point out is function code 1450 for administrative technology. It looks like a decrease <coughs> of 15,000 in that line, but all we did was move a salary. <coughs> Jesse changed some of the function codes. So you'll find that expenditure is increased almost equally on the second page for 4,400. I just wanted to give an explanation on that so you understand that one's going down and one's going up. Uh, the other one that is a similar change is under the 2210 principal's office on page one. We reallocated the funds to the correct code for the copy release. You'll see that coming in on uh, 2250. So that was just moving some money around to the proper code. I didn't want it to throw you off that we were actually having these meetings increases and decreases. Um, let's see. Teachers, uh, so there was some conversation between uh, the principal and the curriculum director, Darius and myself, about um, some changes in positions. There was some conversation around um, adding some staffing here or changing a position from point eight to a full time. Uh, we're still in conversations around those. Uh, the one thing to note is that we do have a retirement and we anticipate that there will be a savings in that salary because we will hire at a lower um, step most likely that is typically what happens um, and that is the line that does have the formula error so I will update this and send you all um, a new version so that you have the correct amount there um, under 2320 for medical therapeutic services, uh, there is a request to add a, bring the part-time uh, position that we currently have budgeted at point four for the occupational therapist assistant up to a full-time position. We also needed to add funds for contract services for the special ed department. That was a request from the director there. And there is the natural salary increase in that line as well. <coughs> 2330, which covers our instructional aids. Um, there was a, a change that had to be made in FY20 to absorb an IA into the local budget. So this isn't really an increase for this year. It's just getting someone in the right spot. And then there is the normal salary adjustments in there. And I am still looking at that account, talking with Tina, making sure that we have everyone included in the right number of IAs in the budget for next year. 2354 mentor stipends. This is an increase based on uh, grant funding. We are not sure that we will continue to receive the same grant funds from REAP and they could also be used for other items. So the curriculum director and Tina have requested that that be moved to local budget. Um, so that is a new line item here to this budget. Underneath that, uh, 2356 professional development, there was an increase uh, or a request to increase professional development funding for teachers and IAs for next year. <coughs> and in the textbook line, there is a certain program that's currently being paid from that same grant I just referenced, refunding that we would like to move to local budget. So there is a minor increase to that line as well. Uh, next one that is a significant increase is function code 2440, other instructional services. Um, consistently, our summer program, from what I can see, <coughs> is to be underfunded. So we did go ahead and increase that so that we don't have to pull from other lines going into next year. And then there was also a request to increase funding for the nature's classroom trip. Testing and assessment on 2720. Uh, there are some natural salary increases there for any uh, staff in that line, uh, but we also added some lines for supplies and materials for <coughs> testing and assessment. 2800 psychological services. Uh, there is a request to add a half time psychologist, and the natural salary increases show up in that line as well. On the next page, uh, transportation, the special education director believes that our transportation for special education are going to increase next year. So we have increased this line item as well as added some funds for bus monitors. 
Uh, school <coughs> security, 3600 is a new line item. Uh, we have the new door fob system here, and we do anticipate while it is a new system, there's always things that come up that we need to troubleshoot, so we did add some uh, small line item there for that. 4110 under custodial. Uh, there was a change from 19 to 20 in staffing, and it actually increased the fiscal year 20 budget. Um, so I'm having to carry that over into 21. The person was hired at a higher rate of pay, so that's a natural increase here. And then we have an addition um, custodial for summer work. Uh, utilities in 20, I'm sorry, 4130. Uh, I look back at prior year electricity bills, and for some reason, this line had way more money than we've ever spent. Um, so I decreased that pretty significantly and even <coughs> left uh, some buffer in there just in case there's some major change. Maintenance of grounds. Uh, the facilities director would like to contract out some of the grounds maintenance services, so that is included here, a minor increase. Maintenance of buildings in the next line <coughs> is based on the prior three year expenditures. We seem to be a little bit underfunded in that line, so I just added that in based on actuals. Um, and then 4,400, we've talked about, that's moving the salary up from up above. 5,150, which is employee separation costs. So we do have a retirement that we anticipate will have to be paid out next year for the sick buyback, but it is slightly lower than the buyback that is in here for. Uh, the current fiscal year, so that is a minor decrease. And then uh, the next line, 5200, insurance for active employees, that was reduced based on actuals from the prior three years. So the um, percentage there is 3.6, and again, I will fix that teacher line so that that's accurately reflected. I don't anticipate that that number is going to jump significantly higher than that. Um, we did work to bring it down to a much more reasonable amount prior to the meeting. And I'm sure Tina can explain if you all have questions specifically about any of the additions. We're happy to try to answer them. So I want to preface that with this is really beginning stages. Um, we, I just actually received um, the uh, what the percentage would be with all of our wish list items and haven't had a chance to talk with um, our entire administration team to kind of like look at what that impact has on the budget. And so we're still kind of deciding when prioritizing too. So if I understand it, reading through it, what do we have? One and a half full-time equivalents or so proposed as additional staffing for the coming year? Yeah, so we've sent, so really I got the percentage this morning. Um, and so we've yeah. sent had some side conversations <coughs> around that. And in looking at um, the needs of the building, really looking at that 0.6 um, position of the CODA and the Point five counseling position to kind of uh, meet the needs of some of the students that we're seeing that are coming in with the traumatic uh, trauma issues and the significant social emotional mm -hmm. needs. So that's kind of where, where our focus is. So yeah. yeah, I mean, Tina had some other requests and from math, a math interventionists and um, increasing the reading interventionists as well. Those, right. got, those got cut off when the percentages just was yeah. not reasonable bringing forward. So mm -hmm. just saying that there are right. other needs and wants and needs, I guess we can fight over whether it's a want or need, um, but that never was too high. So we made those cuts and there's other, um, there's other trimming that can come to this um, as we go through between now and the next meeting. But right. It's kind of the first whack. Okay. <clears throat> so, I mean, it, it looks like just and this is for your first attempt <laughs> and your first attempts working together as a team, all three of you. Um, looks like a very good start to the, uh, the budgeting process. Uh, and I'm glad to hear that you've already put wheels in motion to take, take a harder look. 3.6 won't get a lot of rallying cries from a, a town hall. Um, just from our perspective, fifty thousand dollars is approximately one percent on the budget these days, and forty-eight thousand um, <clears> dollars. <throat> so, on a four-point-eight million-dollar budget, uh, one hundred and seventy-four thousand-dollar increase isn't a tremendous amount of money to spread across the spectrum. It doesn't leave us. It, 
a lot of money, you know, to address all of the issues that we'd love to address. So, I mean, if, if I had to go to bat for 3.6%, I would go to bat for it and see what, what the town can do. But, um, I don't know what every, everyone else thinks or... Uh, next step. So basically the process on this is that, um, you know, this is the first review uh, for you to look through and then at the same time we're going to make some more adjustments. We don't have the state numbers yet, so we don't have the state numbers on what, you know, what our school choice numbers look like, what, um, uh, although Chapter 7 doesn't really affect us directly, but the towns, we're going to look at that to know what the help the town's getting in the sense of, not just because the town gets more Chapter 7 doesn't mean we get to spend more, but at the same time, we also know it's going to put the town in a more comfortable spot, depending on what our numbers are going to be. Mm -hmm. um, but those numbers don't come out to the end of the month. The 27th, I think, is the release, the release of those numbers. So that will help us in navigating that. Um, you know, also, looking at enrollments coming in, you know, what our preschool enrollments going to be, and whether or not there will be a change in preschool, the number of classrooms in preschool. Um, but we have to double verify that kind of thing because people come out of the woodwork um, as well on those kind of things. So those are the other, those are the other things we're looking at as well. Um, am I missing any other kind of thing there? I don't think you had it all. Right. So, um, so the process is that we'll bring us back in the February meeting. It will be cleaned up. Mm -hmm. um, we, if there's any of the numbers that were uh, rough estimates, they will be exact. At that point, um, you will vote a tentative budget to then bring to the Finance Committee, or Select Board Finance Committee joint meeting, where they will review it, give us their kind of take on things, um, and then we have a final vote on it based on giving, <coughs> allowing them input. And we we'll typically see. hold the hearing. And then we hold a hearing. Uh, <coughs> what, when are the date? I mean, the, <coughs> we generally hold the hearing in our March meeting. Right, right. Yeah. So, so. Mm -hmm. each sounds slightly different. So if I kind of, if I said it wrong, no, I only gone okay. through it once. So, um, yeah, sometimes, yeah, we go to them to present it, and then we have a public hearing. Usually, after they've seen it, so they can come and comment whether or not the rest of the town's budget is going to work with what our request is. They often have sat in on the yeah. hearing and then <clears throat> gone from there. So, yeah, but they've had a first pass at it based on the February meeting results, so. Correct, correct. So between now, the cleanup between now and February, as you guys look through this, if you have comments or concerns, you know, contact Shelly and stuff on, on those, but we'll clean it up. Um, and like I said, the February hearing, vote what we want to move forward with the number, um, and so on and so forth. Um, <clears throat> Just a curiosity question. Do we have Tina D or faculty assembled? Uh, do we have a sense as to future retirements? How many are pending or looming these days? <coughs> yeah, no more. <laughs> <laughs> um, I look forward to. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but we, we only know. We only know for <laughs> certain. Sure. Are you talking about? Like, you're not. For next year, we know because yes. they have to submit the. No, they, they have, have to submit. submit. Right. So you're just kind of saying, like. I'm trying to get a sense as to, you know. Um, we know that one, I, I think, if you're talking about. But just, I mean, I, I understand. Budget. Is it you know, like the ones that are in the budget or ones that are coming up that are not? That in might the be in the budget. Once we're talking to the teachers, we're saying, I'm, I'm out of here in two years. Oh. I mean, that's really what you're yeah. asking, kind of, in a sense, right? Yeah. Ask Mary that. <laughs> <laughs> you answer that? <laughs> no. no you don't yeah. really know. I mean, we, yeah. It, even in, as part of the I mean, the issues, we try to create an algorithm of when people would be eligible right. to retire, and we created that. Yeah. Um, but just because you're eligible to retire doesn't people mm -hmm. have different life choices. <laughs> Right there. Right there. Yeah, right there. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, well, it's an important it's question because that number fluctuates the budget. If you look historically, well, if you have two years, people retire changed. next year, that's two percent to the budget. Right. Correct. So, I mean, I'm just trying to put it in perspective um, in terms of 
the, the difficulties that are presented to us in terms of planning a budget. Uh -uh. <clears throat> so, okay. Any other questions on the budget? Thank you for the <coughs> work in this together. I'm, I look forward to taking it home and looking through it. Sort of. <laughs> <clears throat> so we're down to reports. I have no report to give. Neither. Just <laughs> collaborative. No, no meetings no. left. Okay. And principal. Sure. I think this is the most well attended principal's report that I've had. So hold on. I wish I kind of, I don't know, planned a little song and dance, but I don't know. I know. Should have jazzed it up. Um, so, our school based community, that is our kindergarten registration, is now open and we're accepting our applications through the next week. Um, thank you to, <clears throat> please stand, Jen Smith and Giselle Richardson for. Uh, scheduling our uh, Martin Luther King events. We're having a school-wide project with art and movies. And you're always welcome to come and attend those events, volunteer your time. We're always looking for volunteers. It'll reduce our sub uh, mind items. Just kidding, just kidding. Um, January 17th is our technology professional development and Deerfield staff will be <coughs> engaged in a wide variety of assistive or technology topics ranging from robotics, interactive math software, assistive communication technology, and everything in between. Um, this is the first ever Tech Day that allows for comprehensive choices and courses taught by our teaching experts, all supported by our tech team and uh, our director of elementary education. <laughs> we also have some teachers that are, um, are participating in the curate um, DES curriculum project, I should probably just read instead of trying to improvise here, um, is uh, Curate is a project that some of our teachers are participating in and they're honored to be to provide the valuable information uh, for the Massachusetts curriculum uh, panel to review in late spring. And facilities, thanks to our fabulous facility director and our marvelous custodians for supporting a couple of our building renovations. We have two classrooms that now have that vinyl plank flooring and the public bathrooms are shinier than ever with their new epoxy floors and plastic partitions. We invite you to take a peek at, <laughs> on your way out. <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't help it, I'm sorry. I couldn't resist, <laughs> um, And as far as our, <laughs> I always come on Jen up front to laugh. Um, as far as our technology, the surveillance camera system installation is underway. The cabling for the 10 cameras was completed prior to the break. The hardware was received by the vendor and being configured, and the server and cameras of physical installation is scheduled to be completed in January, but the exact date of installation is not. It's to be determined. So everyone's ready to smile for the cameras. Absolutely, all day long. our 10 new cameras. Um, so <laughs> I can hear some public comment over here. It's kind of funny. Um, and classroom news, Susie and Ryan's class, the butterflies are wrapping up their study of sound in the sound lab. And after sniffing around a bit, we sense uh, the sound lab will be transformed into an olfactorium as they make their way through the in-depth study of the five senses. Uh, I ad lib there, poor <laughs> Suzanne. <laughs> uh, Miss Kemp's students have just completed the Who I Am books. Um, where the students enjoy creating pictures and poems to entice their readers about their animals as they complete their adaptation science unit and using their inform, uh, information writing. Grade five are working on informal writing around westward expansion units. Uh, I read Kayla's thing. Um, <laughs> I'm checking in to make sure I'm getting this right. And Ms. Andrews' class is about to begin a unit on journalism, and they'll learn about responsible ethical journalism as they weave their narratives and draw on their informational writing skills to explain ideas and events, um, and even make arguments. 
So as we enter the new year, the DES team continues to work their academic and social emotional magic. <laughs> no? Okay. That's all I got. I tried. <laughs> Tell them about our visitors from your mouth. Oh, yes. Um, Emily McDonald, are you here? Emily McDonald, or did I yesterday, so didn't make it. You could, turn the, you could turn the camera. No, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> she's, used to, she's used to being a celebrity. <laughs> yesterday and they came into third and fifth grade. <laughs> um, they read some stories about teamwork with each of the classes they went into and then they participated in a STEM project where they had to build their own hockey goal and net out of yarn and straws and tape and they also had to build hockey sticks and be able to hit a little puck into their net without it going through the net. So it was a really cool team building experience and for them to get to see these players that they go and watch at these big games come into their classrooms and get to interact with them. And we got filmed in my classroom and it's going to be on TV at some point, so be on the lookout. executive session on our agenda, but given the fact we've had no further meetings, we will not be going into executive session this evening, so I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.